Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and I have a, another example problem. Still going with the, the dynamics, or the, my dynamics classes. Uh, this is a, uh, an example problem. Again, this is rotational uh, and translational uh, kinematics, <coughs> or the type of problem we're looking at. And on this particular problem, okay, we have a vertical axis windmill, and it consists of two blades that have a parabolic shape. So here we have the parabolic shape, the two blades, and over here we have, you know, the, the, obviously it's the windmill. Um, and it's got a, okay, the blades are originally at rest and begin to turn with a constant angular acceleration of a sub c, a sub constant is equal to 0 0.5 radians per second squared. All right, so they have this illustrated. Here is the common axis, and everything is rotating about that axis. All right, so here's where the problem starts. Determine the magnitude of the velocity and acceleration of points A and B. So points A and B are here. Let me see if I can get this thing. Give me a pen. So point A and B, well, point B and A. And on the blade, after the blade has rotated two revolutions. So a few things that I want you to note. <clears throat> All right, it's a parabolic shape, so it means that that diameter is constantly changing from top to bottom. Uh, there's the axis. And that's important because what this is saying is that you've got two defined points. B at a radius of 10 feet from the center, and A at a radius of 20 feet from the center. So there's A and B. Those are effectively on two separate diameters, two separate radii. All right, and the blades are originally at rest, and the angular angular acceleration is constant. So that means we've got a constant acceleration uh, problem. And that means we can use our four kinematic equations, or you know, at least four of our kinematic equations, because we're dealing with constant acceleration now. All right, we need to determine the magnitude of the velocity and acceleration of points A and B. Oh, after the blade has rotated through two revolutions. So again, two revolutions. So we start from zero, and they're going to go two, two revolutions, two turns. So those are some key points that we're going to have to keep in mind as we solve this problem. So what I did was I put this little free body diagram to kind of sh demonstrate what this looks like. If you look at it from the top, this is the center. And you can see a few things about this. You know, you've got this point B at 10 feet, and here's point A at 20 feet. They have a common axis, a common rotation. So it means that all of your angular parameters, you know, displacement, velocity, and acceleration are common. And that means that our tangential parameters, uh, tangential displacement, velocity, tangential acceleration, are going to be based on the radius of where they take place at. So you're going to have a different issue going on for tangential velocity acceleration at 10 feet than you will at 20 feet. So keep those th that in mind before you even start the problem. That's that's a key piece of information that's starting the problem. So let's go ahead and, and lay out everything that we know. Here we have the given, okay, I got the constant acceleration. I've got the radius at B is 10 feet, the radius A at 20 feet. You've got an initial velocity of omega equals um, <clears throat> omega of naught is equal to zero radians per second because it's starting from rest. All right, and we're concerned with what's going on from rest to two revolutions. All right, so what are we trying to find? The magnitudes of the velocity and acceleration of points A and B. So let's see. Let's get our thought process. I gave you a little bit of information <clears throat> already. So our thought process. You know, the acceleration is constant, so that means the four kinematic equations apply, and this is the equation that we should concern ourselves with. Omega squared is equal, er, omega squared of final, two revolutions, is equal to omega squared at the start plus 2ac times the delta of theta. And points A and B have the same angular displacement, velocity, and acceleration because they've got a common axis. All right. So let's see, let's start approaching this problem, keeping those, those bits of information in mind. 
So let's see. So let's let's tackle angular velocity because we do have an equation right off the bat that can give us that. All right. So and keep in mind, you know, this this will be the same for points A and B. So angular velocity. Again, we're going to start with this equation, and since it's starting from rest, so we can say our initial uh, velocity, angular velocity, is zero, and our initial displacement is zero. Now our initial, our final displacement is going to be, you know, one or one revolution is equal to two pi, so it'll be four pi, two times two pi, four pi. So we we have that. We have this. Uh, this alpha, you know, the uh, 0 0.05 radians per second, and the only unknown we have is the uh, final angular velocity. So if we plug all those, all that information in, you know, zero plus two times 0.5 radians per second times the quantity of four pi radian, you know, that's two revolutions minus zero. And that works out to the final angular velocity is 3.545 radians per second. So now we have an angular velocity at that point in time, and we've got an acceleration, which is constant. All right. So now let's see. So what else do we have to, or what else do we go with here? Again, with the uh, angular velocity acceleration, both known. So now we've got those two bits of information. Now we can calculate those magnitudes of the velocity acceleration. You know, and like I said before, points A and B have a common angular velocity, but two different radii, 10 feet and 20 feet. So now let's go ahead and start moving forward with this, looking at our, our magnitudes. Let's start with our velocity. So we've got an equation for that. You know, the velocity is equal to omega times whatever radius we have. And that gives us our tangential velocity, right? So that's the translational velocity. And we have both of those information for both or both of those uh, variables for both points, points A and B. So if we look at both of those, they both have a common angular velocity. Uh, let me find my. There we go. Common angular velocity, 3.545 radians per second. Two different radii. For A, it's 20 feet. For B, it's 10 feet. So our tangential velocity at A is going to be faster, twice as fast, just got twice the radii, at 70.9 feet per second. And for B, it's going to be 35.45 uh, feet per second. So that's the first, uh, for, for our first um, answer, you know, the magnitude of that tangential velocity. Uh, tang uh, the acceleration is going to be a little bit uh different it's going to be a little more challenging because we do need to know the tangential and the normal acceleration but both of those are we have enough information to calculate both of those so let's take what we know and move this along so now we have you know our tangential velocity at both points right and now let's start moving forward with this oh and then we also have a little bit more information you know we have our, our tangential acceleration you know which we need to do and that's just alpha times r the radii respective radii and again it's just like the angular velocity 0.5 radians per second square times 20 feet that gives us a the tangential velocity for a and that gives us 10 feet per second second square and then for b the tangential velocity is 0.5 radii per second square because again it's it's constant when they have the common uh, center of rotation, 10 feet, and you end up with 5 feet per second squared. Now, since we're looking for the magnitude, we do need that normal acceleration, the one that goes inward uh, to the point of rotation. So we have to calculate that as well, and that's another equation, a uh, very simple equation as well. You know, the normal acceleration is equal to the angular velocity squared times radius, and we have both of those bits of information you know remember the, that one was one that we had calculated you know right you know right off the bat so 3.545 radians per second you know the quantity squared for a is going to be times 20 feet which gets us 251.33 feet per second squared right 
so two, uh, 251.33 feet per second squared. And for B, it's 10 feet at 125.66 feet per second squared. So now we have a normal for A and a tangential for A, a normal for a tangential for B and a normal for B. 10 feet per second squared, 5 feet per second squared. Now, in order to find the magnitude, we have to take the root sum square of both of those. So we can go ahead and do that and end up with our magnitudes. A fairly straightforward equation. And that'll get us our resultant or our magnitude of our acceleration. You know. And for A, point A, it comes out at 252 feet per second squared. And for point B, it comes out at 126 feet per second squared. Right? Using that same equation. So our final answers for the magnitudes of A and B is, you know, for A it's uh, 70.9 feet per second, and for B that's the velocity, and for uh, A the acceleration is 252 feet per second squared. For point B the velocity is 35.5 feet per second, and for B it's 126 feet per second squared. And remember that's at two revolutions. That excel the that those blades are still accelerating so you know as it moves it'll move faster as it rotates it'll move those will be changing again this is professor cummings and that was just one more example i keep forgetting to say this go ahead and like and subscribe you know that gets me into the algorithm a little bit more and i will see you on the next video